Hello, my name is Salman Hamid, and I'm Assistant Professor of Integrated Science and Humanities at Hampshire College. I'm Kevin Anderson. I teach courses in film and anthropology at the University of Massachusetts, and this is Film Autopsy. Hello and welcome to a film autopsy of The Kid with the Bike. It's a new Belgian film by Jean-Pierre Dardenne and Luc Dardenne, otherwise known as the Dardenne brothers. Really nothing like the uh, Wachowski, <laughs> Cohen, or Farley brothers. Um, the Dardenne brothers have been making some very interesting, um, dramatically difficult films uh, for over a decade. One of my favorites I'd seen in the past called La Promesse was excellent. So was Rosetta, and this film, similar to those, deals with a young person, in this case a small boy, probably 11 or 12 years old, who, has, uh, who lives in an orphanage. His father has run away from him, kind of abandoned him. At some point, the kid uh, is committed to find his father, not only find his father, but find the bike that he left at his father's house. So find his dad, find the bike, and then, you know, have a family and live happily ever after. It does not work like that. He does, however, get his bike back, but his father really wants nothing to do with him. Interestingly enough, there's never any mention of the mother, which kind of compelled me to start thinking about the film as much more uh, of a metaphor than as a literal story, because I do have to say, even though it has received some pretty high praise. Uh, as a story in of itself, I was not too impressed. But uh, what is the metaphor for? The metaphor of old Europe versus new Europe. Huh, that's interesting. I mean, so first of all, I mean, it's a Belgian film, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, pretty much close to a French film. I mean, I mean it, it that's, had, old, that's <laughs> old Europe. It had the old, it had the <laughs> feeling of uh, certainly of these um, French films, uh, a, a, a bit uh, existential and, and kids. Um, with a lot of free time and roaming around. I mean, I mean, I think, I think that's how it was. In fact, it reminded me of uh, 400 Blows uh, okay. when I was watching that. Here is about this kid who is trying to yeah. go around and uh, and oftentimes run, uh, runs away. And, uh, and 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 running away is a big theme in there. So I think one thing that is, uh, I mean, I was absorbed in the film. I think that's. Uh, I didn't know where the movie was going. Uh, the kid is an amazing example of tenacity. I think, mm, and in fact, in true. fact, in the movie, uh, one, uh, his nickname was given by. Uh, so he also uh, sort of like fell into a drug, uh, whatever, like you know, guy. Some older kids in the neighborhood, when he finally does get outside the orphanage, uh, take him mm. under their wings, right. and they're involved with drugs and crime. But they, but their nickname for him was Pitbull, and I think that I think was was pretty apt. He's because, a tough kid. Because the kid, I, th I think, and that tenacity goes from right from the beginning. To yes. the end. I mean, I think whatever, uh, whatever you look at it, whatever aspect of the movie we looked at it, he was actually driven by a, whatever the purpose was, and usually it had to do with the bike. Yeah. And the dad, but it's not clear how much with the dad, but certainly with the bike. So, certainly with the so, bike. So uh, I don't know about the metaphor, but I, but I think, but I think it certainly um, works with dealing with uh, sort of like you know. Uh, a lost childhood. I mean, that's what he's trying to reclaim, and, and he is completely focused on reclaiming that. Well, which brings up this other issue. There's a, um, a young, attractive hairdresser uh, in the film, played by um, uh, Cecile de France, who we'd seen earlier in um, Hereafter and a couple of Lovers Espanol. And um, she ends up adopting him. Um, and we're not quite sure <laughs> why, because <laughs> this kid, even though he has, he's tenacious, <laughs> and he, she certainly feels sorry for him, but he is, is really quite, quite difficult to get along with. Il vous aime bien, occupez-vous de lui, c'est la seule solution. C'est vous qui veut voir pas moi. Ben, il m'oubliera. Um, namely because of his drive, either trying to get his father back, trying to get the bike back, trying to, you know, uh, create a sense of normalcy for his childhood. And I think that's what compels her character to adopt this kid, because both of them 
together, it's not entirely, uh, the, the relationship doesn't entirely work out for both of them, but it does give both of them a sense of having a normal existence. And there's even talk of like having play dates with the, with the, the, the Arabic neighbors down the street who have a large family and they're gonna do picnics and it's, but on their own, they're kind of lost. And so they manufacture this family. But but yeah, but but this was one of those things that I didn't buy uh, in the sense because, because there is no background provided of why she is doing that. It's she's just doing that. In fact, there was uh, a moment in the uh, in the film. I don't think we're giving too much away because the movie is really not about the narrative that much. And that is uh, at one point uh, her boyfriend actually gives her the option like you know it's either him or me and 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 she just says ah okay him. But but it's but it's like okay it's pretty yeah. strange. Yeah. Forward, like you know, I mean, but we don't get the reasoning. Well, I didn't believe she's that. young, she's attractive, she's a successful business owner, she has her trade as a, as a hairdresser, but also owns her own salon. Yet, she does not have a husband, she does not have a child. And so, I think this kid comes along, this lost boy, if you will, and he's in desperate need of some kind of familial structure. She, I presume, then is similarly in need of a sense of, of, of fulfilling some maternal desires. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, fine, but, but I just I just don't see that coming out you know, so well in the movie. I, I mean, I think the way the way I would say is like the movie is meh. It's like meh. I think a lot is up for grabs in this film. I, I can see some people seeing this film and saying this film floored me. Uh, I. I'm not going to be able to say that. Right. Um, there were a lot of long bike scenes, which were which were which were interesting and. Uh, yeah. yeah, but don't but it. don't don't go to see it because of like an action bicycle film. <laughs> there was a lot of action actually. No, that that well, is true. There are lo there are a lot of right. action bike scenes. In fact, I would say that if you do want to see the movie, <laughs> go for the action <laughs> bike scenes. I cannot. Uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah. I mean, I mean, think of French films, existential films. Well, well, maybe don't think. Maybe go see those films. Those childhood. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe come back. To see four hundred blows. See four hundred blows. I think absolutely. I think that's that's much better version. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.